So last night I was literally sitting on Vimeo watching wedding video after wedding video after wedding video. And I was sobbing. Like, I think I went through a bunch of tissues just sitting there watching them, you know, <laughs> people from all walks of life. And <laughs> no cultures, connection to you, but you know, just complete and utter yep. strangers. Mm-hmm. Just just what getting carried away in their story. <laughs> That's how it is. I mean, we're not wedding videographers, but um, we work with tons of them. And um, I don't know. Do you sometimes feel like that's the last thing on the list with couples? Interesting. Um, it, it, for some couples, yes. I think it's it's an afterthought. Like, let me get everything checked off the list first, the venue and the photographer and the DJ and everything. And then um, I always know when somebody is approaching booking videography and it's like six months before their wedding, then it's pretty obvious that it's an afterthought for them. Yeah. But I think videography is growing and it has grown tremendously and people are considering it at equal or even more important than photography because of where we are technologically right. speaking. Agreed. It's just such a different way to experience the memories. You know, you could freeze it with photography or you can really just, you know, dive into those moments where you can hear that, you know, your loved ones speaking to each other, um, laughing. It's, there's something to be said about that. Today, we're going to talk about the importance of videography, how it's done, our experiences with it, how to choose a videographer. Right. Welcome to our podcast. So, you're engaged. Now what? Today, we are going to be discussing videography, specifically at Live Picture Studios. This is who we are, where we are, what we do, and we are fortunate enough to have our CEO and founder of the company, Kwa Lee, joining us. Welcome, Kwa. Hey, everybody. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you for having me. So, Kwa, have you personally filmed weddings? Yes. How many would you say, approximately? Uh, I would say over 300. Mm -hmm. Over 300. And you've directed them as well. Yeah, I mean, I, I I never be I was never a second shooter, so I've mm-hmm. always started as the the single. Well, I started from video. I, I started with the the traditional way of putting the camera on your shoulder, and mm-hmm. with a heavy rig to breaking down to the smallest cameras and mm-hmm. lugging everything all by myself. And and, and this the, was because that's <laughs> where we were with technology at that time. Yes, and and that was because I was inexperienced at the time when mm-hmm, I did it. Mm-hmm. And, but I did it. I didn't do it for Live Picture Studios. I was working for a different companies when I did it. Okay. So I started working. You were kind with, of following suit. Right. I'm not sure I should mention names, but I, you know, I started with Sound Surge, which is a DJ company, which was my friend from the music industry. Um, we could get into my past later, and then uh, uh, and then I worked with Gabelli Studios at the time um, with John Piccolo, who is a good friend of mine. And um, they're, they're the one that kind of launched me into the the wedding industry. Right. So your background is filmmaking and, and music. And weddings was sort of thrown in your path, right? Yeah. Uh, my background is in entertainment, I call it. Entertainment. Mm-hmm. I was in the music industry for a very long time, for 10 plus years. And then uh, as a record producer, songwriter. And, um, and then I wanted to learn how to make... Uh, um, music videos and and I sucked at it really really bad and um and so I, I went into filmmaking in which I thought it was a little easier for me um and I sucked at that too and so I went to photography <laughs> <laughs> and then I was pretty good at photography and then I learned how visuals work and then I went in, back into filmmaking and I was much better at it and then all of a sudden, my friends from the music industry, like Sound Surge, or Raphael, he spins the one at three point five. I think he still does it today. He um, he said, "Hey, you want to do a wedding?" And I said, "No, not really." Uh, but he said it was uh, it was a good side gig, and uh, I shot my first one of their fr- best friends, one of his best friends' weddings, and they loved it. And I took it where it was the filmmaking approach the qua way of doing it and uh from there it was uh it was like his friends kept asking about me and kept going and then all of a sudden like i'm working a nine to five job still including my entertainment including working the music stuff and and i'm doing like 30 gigs a year in weddings so would you have said at that point that you're that you took so you put your own spin on it 
um, you kind of cross that threshold between, I don't even know if, if you can say that there's a difference between wedding videography and, and cinematography. I kind of feel like you brought in this filmmaking aspect into mm-hmm. the wedding world. Right. Right? Yeah. So talk about the techniques that you used and what you applied when oh, you shoot. were filming weddings. You, you mentioned first shooters, second shooters, right. third oh, shooters. First, first, the technique is understanding. That's the reason why I went to photography. It's understanding light, understanding uh, how to capture the moment. Mm-hmm. That was extremely, extremely important to me. Mm-hmm. Um, and then understanding how to use uh, different lenses and um, and and then how do you create, you know, the minute you hit record, my mindset, it needed to be usable. How do okay. you keep it usable? Mm-hmm. I, I didn't want to approach it where it's considered what videography is. See, I don't look at videography as individual. I look at it as cinematography. I look at it as just filmmaking mm-hmm. everything. And mm-hmm. and so what I so what I wanted to do was mix videography with cinematography because I know that I had to cover certain details that were really important mm-hmm. to them. Might mm-hmm. not be important to me, mm-hmm. but I knew it was important to them. I could I looked at it as the videography standpoint. Okay. And then what was important to me to tell a story, I looked at it as the cinematography standpoint, which was capturing a certain light certain stories, certain details, Mm -hmm. you know, and then, and that stuff that the couples didn't think that was important, was important to me. Mm -hmm. And that was my approach to videography. And, you know, and then, you know, the results kind of spoke for itself, Mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I started from the ground up. I made massive mistakes that were forgivable by the, by the couples, thank God, because they were kind of like within the warm environment. Uh, I don't think it's forgivable today if I was to do that. Um, and I took that and I learned from it. And and I figured that, you know what, there was such a huge opportunity to to expand in the wedding industry from giving great, delivering great content to the couples. I said, you know, I got to take all these these things that I learned from working with these companies and let's turn it into Live Picture Studios. Let's isolate videography for a second. Why Why videography? Why is it important? I got into the visuals because I love storytelling i love filmmaking i think it lasts forever the reason why uh you know i'm a first passion artist before even entrepreneur right and so i go into the i go into the storytelling mode because i know that it's going to last forever i wanted to be in an industry that could tell that you could tell a story and it actually mattered it was impactful it was better than just randomly shooting something that people was going to watch it whatever and and just kind of let it you know it's like you know in my opinion i looked at the wedding stuff as as I, that my my work was going to be was going to be used for the generations down for that couple it's going to be passed down to the kids like an heirloom. To the grandkids it's mm-hmm. just keep on going if that's going to re-spark their memories if that's going to uh you know rekindle relationships and and all this type of stuff to me i I felt like i was saving people's lives Mm -hmm. (laughs) and people change Mm -hmm. you know sometimes you have relatives where they they don't they're not with you forever absolutely so now you have really genuine memories of them on your most important day right so that so that approach understanding having that mindset that how important it is for that couple to um to to have to have that memory that they're now they're never going to have again I mean, I felt like I was uh, I was extremely responsible. Every couple has their own, you know, idea of what they want in their video, mm-hmm. but the integrity of the company has to remain strong too, because mm-hmm. there is a style, there is a brand that Live Picture Studios is putting out there, as in other videography mm-hmm. companies. Right. You know, you should be able to tell mm-hmm. an LPS film which is which, yeah, and know that it's it's produced here. But how do we do that when everybody has? Right, good question. Well, yeah, I mean, that was one of the biggest challenges was how do you duplicate yourself? That was the biggest thing in the beginning. And you just have to find passionate people that love cinematography and actually understands how to cover. But it was more heavy towards understanding how to create art rather than just going around coverage. You find someone that just only doing coverage, that it's just going to look like another videography company. And nobody's gonna. There's no nothing tasteful about it, and so I felt that coverage was always easier to teach than to find someone that had an artistic eye, and so 
my uh you know i i've been blessed i guess you know mm-hmm. people came knocking on my door um and they just became, they were just really talented people but you know what i don't know they i don't know it's all luck i would just say that i put out this message about you know you know the work that speaks for yourself right you put out the message that by putting out the work and it's artful it's tasteful you know you attract those type of people that wants to work with you that was my question. Can you, know, you personally teach yeah. that type of talent? Or do you think the um, person just either has it or they don't have it? And if they uh, have it, you can, conversation. you can help develop it, right? That's a different conversation. No, I I, I think anything is teachable. Mm-hmm. I just think that, you know, you're, I believe that it's, you don't, you're, you're, you either have a passion for it or you don't. As simple mm-hmm. as that. If you if you enjoy and have the aspirations to learn something because you're passionate about something doing well, mm-hmm. eventually you're going to be really good at it mm-hmm. and be and then and you will consider that as a talent. I think the talent would be more about your aspiration of le- wanting to learn something, mm-hmm. you know? Uh, not technically the skill set. The skills is always teachable. It's just a matter of do you have the mindset to do this every single weekend and do you care enough about the couples to do your absolute best. That was the hardest part to find. And and so and then and then how much do you actually really care about your craft? Do you go actually do you what do you do when you practice? Are you practicing your craft every single week, every single day, you know? It's not about uh, you know, so you know, are you putting out a reel? Are you when I'm looking at the work, it was about how do you come up with that lighting style? How do you come up with this? And they they give you they kind of tell you the the intricates of how they did it, and you could tell by their voice and enthusiasm how passionate they were. That's a good indicator. Of it, but they never shot a wedding before. But that's a good indicator that you know what this is going to be a good cinematographer. Oh yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. And mm-hmm. now now we just have to teach them. Now are they are they willing? And if they're in the filmmaking world, they know that they're working 14, 18 hour days. And they know they're not getting paid that much. <laughs> so you already know that they're in it for the art. They're not in it for the money. They're not in it for the business. They're in it for the story. They're in it for the cinematography of it. Now, if I could take that and they could understand that during the wedding industry, then I had successfully duplicated myself. That was the hardest part to find. And um, and it's not e- I, I'm sure it's not easy. It is. You know, our producers have a very hard time finding people. And it's, you know that's why, it's take, that's why it took us so long to scale our our operations but the mindset wasn't about just doing more weddings the mindset was how can we do more weddings and and get better at when we as we continue to grow so let's let's get into the i guess the technicalities of this for a second let's go back for a second to when you know you shot five weddings, 20, that's 2011, 11, right? 20, okay. 2011. Yeah. Um, did you have this business model in mind? You knew you, did you know right away? No. Okay. Okay. So that kind of, <laughs> it just kind of evolved as time went on. Yeah. Okay. You know, you, you know what it is? You know, I, I don't want to, you know, I saw the industry mm-hmm. and I saw how bad it was. I mm-hmm. saw that, you know, a credible company that I worked with doesn't have real backup systems. And I saw them lose content from the couples deliverables that would take in three or four years to get to them um and then and then things not put together not packaged correctly and it was across the board in that in, in during that era especially when i started i was like what's going on is it is it really like this in the industry because in the film world we wouldn't it would never work this way and and so i saw the opportunity to fix that and I had infrastructure in my head and I had infrastructure, I have some sort of infrastructure because of my corporate background too. Mm-hmm. And Qua, by the way, used to work for Ernst & Young. Yeah. Ernst, in the tech, in the tech world and, mm-hmm. and the, also in the media world in there. Mm-hmm. And, I'll, and I'll break a keyboard if I touch it. So, <laughs> so, so we can <laughs> and I saw, I saw, I saw there was an opportunity to make these people's lives not less miserable. <laughs> it wasn't about opportunity for me. It was an opportunity that we can make this industry better. That's more how efficient. I looked at it. More mm-hmm. efficient uh, and happier couples. And, and, and I tackled that one. So you went from shooting five weddings, sounds pretty experimentally, mm-hmm. and then developing that you had the business model in your head that developed. Yeah, it started in, so 2011 started, in, you know, it started with, Vendors and then my own was like five, and then 2012 we went from 
we did 12. And then the following in 2013, we did 90. Wow. So you would say that that year was kind of the crossroads for you where you you knew that, okay, now I can kind of sort of apply what's in my mind Mm -hmm. to, to start to really build this and fix these issues. Yes. You know what? 2011 was in my mind already because that's when I was in the trenches of doing everything. And I was, I was going to, I was very close to partnering up with another company to do it. Uh, the deal wasn't, wasn't great. And, um, you know, if anything, he, he had told me is that you wouldn't be able to do this in the, in this wedding industry. I've tried it and I failed at it. What makes you think you're going to make, do it? That was, that was his saying to me. And I said, well, okay, I'll just do it then. It just kind of fired me up and I just did it, you know? Ammunition. <laughs> so <laughs> now because it, videography is so technical, let's break that down a little bit mm-hmm. because, yep. uh, you know, it's live. It's all happening at once. So there are different options for couples to approach. Everybody has a different budget and where they put their value is, is mm-hmm. you know, yeah. kind of broad as well. So talk about that. We have, um, at least in our company, we offer anywhere from just a simple, minimalistic one shooter. That's right. Uh, why would somebody consider two, three or four videographers? Well, first of all, one videographer, you're not going to get the right coverage. Just imagine, you know, you're just just think of the most important day of your wedding. And when you say coverage, are you saying just barring the artistic side of this? You're not even going to get good just coverage, coverage points. Just yep. coverage. Mm-hmm. Let's take let's take the most important day of your uh, of a wedding couple, which is the ceremony, mm-hmm. whether it's at the venue or at the church. Imagine with one camera. You're locked down in the center ca- camera. What are you going to shoot? Are you going to shoot a wide shot? You're going to you're going to zoom in and shoot a close up? Are you going to move the camera while the vows are happening? And shake the camera and look like, you know, like earthquake is happening. Video video is very, very different from photography where photography, you could move around mm-hmm. and capture, diff- you could capture three different angles within the, in the span of two minutes. Video, the minute you breathe on the camera and it shakes on you, you lost that, that time. For, you can't even use that content. It just looks horrible. Mm-hmm. So you're relying on something to cut to That's while right. you do move the camera. That's right. So you, your second operator uh, usually sits on a different angle. You know, um, usually for, you know, we, everyone has a different style, but what we do, we, we put the angle on, you know, on the side angle, we're covering the groom if it's two cameras, right? And so you got a center camera and now, so if, if a center camera needs to move for whatever reason, guess is in the way, photographer needs to shot, center camera moves from an editing standpoint. You it, still have that coverage. It, cut, mm-hmm. it cuts to the other angle. Makes sense. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Now let's talk about three and four. The third camera is now what we call what we call it a 180. It's exactly that. It covers your left, your center, and your right camera from a ceremony perspective. Let's just don't talk about ceremony because it's a lot more than just a ceremony. So you got your so you got your center camera as your first camera. You got your left camera as that covers the groom as your second camera, and you got your third camera that covers the bride on the right side. You know now how we shoot it is. It's really depending on the the layout of the ceremony. Typically, it, there is a typical layout, but sometimes, what if the couple stands up? What if, or what if the guest stands up? Cameras has to make a camera move, right? Mm-hmm. So cameras are never locked down. People forget that cameras do have to move, but when they move, that's when the edit actually happens, right? The camera moves because guest stands in the way. Someone wants to jump in the camera. It cuts to a center camera. It cuts to a left camera. Whatever that is. It's such a, a like the the. Right. That's the, the shooting side and the of editing it. side of it. It's it's right. it's a, a big reliance. Let's on talk each about other. that's technical. Now let's talk about artistically. You, you know, you have two ca- minimal. You, you know, so say you only got one camera. You the the and the bride is walking down the aisle, and the camera is pulling. You know, is just capturing everyone coming down the aisle. What we call also pull, pulling focus by themselves. By the time the bride gets, to, uh, you know, the father, you know, uh, gives it? her away. Gives her away. The, the the camera comes around to the center and captures the rest of the ceremony, right? But ha- do you want the reaction shot to the groom? I think that's a really important part of the story. What What is the center camera? If you're only one camera, is the center camera going to actually shoot it while the bride is coming down? Turn the camera, look at the bride, bring the and I mean, look at the groom, bring it back to the center camera. I mean, I mean, you may, I mean, I see that happen. Not recommended. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. So, and it, I think that's where the impact comes in is when it is your own wedding and it is your own husband, your own father. Your own memories. Uh-huh. Yes. And those are 
blatantly missing, now you're wishing you had better coverage. Well, it's, it's a live event. If it was a filmmaking event. Yeah, you can say cut, back to cut, one. <laughs> back to one, do it again. That's right. Do it again. <laughs> okay, now it's time. Now give me a good reaction shot. But mm-hmm. you're not, you only got one shot at this. And you want to be as authentic as a palm. You, so the more coverage you got, the more you're going to cover. You know, so even so with the third camera, what we do is third camera also does tracks the camera, tracks them coming down from a left to right side, right? If it's the second camera, we track it too. Third camera sometimes captures the reaction shot of the guest, mother of the bride, father of the bride. So when they stand up, there's reaction shots all over the place, you know? It's not easy because it really depends on the venue to do that. But if not, they always find, or, or the third camera will be doing the back shot, mm-hmm. you know, maybe the, the, the train of the dress or from the balcony, it's just different perspective. It's the same thing. You're walking down the aisle, but the artistic value of it, very, very, very different. It's the experience that you get. And when it comes to storytelling, it's like, oh my God, you know, there's, there's a reason for that. It makes sense. Uh, we have a lot of people even listening in from outside of our area. So meeting with a videographer, what are some of the most important things that they should think of? Coming in for, for their meeting, what should they be prepared with and questions th- to know um, that who you're working with is trustworthy and that you're going yeah, to get a, a that's, great consistent that's the, video? That's, that's the number one. It's the trust. It's, you know, you're not going to, no couple is going to walk in and say, can I trust you? It's just, it's just not going to, it doesn't work that way. So humans have the tendency to figure out how to create you know, break down the barriers to find that trust, right? You know, it's actually not such a bad <laughs> idea. I, I imagine all the business transactions that would go a certain way if you were to walk in and say, "Can I trust you?" <laughs> that puts somebody on the spot. I mean, you would feel like you need to earn their trust and, and right. right immediately follow yeah. through. At least I would. Yeah. You know, like yeah. that's actually a brilliant way to start yeah. a conversation. <laughs> Can I trust you? <laughs> yeah. Can I trust you? Yeah. You go out on a first date. <laughs> Maybe that's Can a good I trust start. You? Yeah. Right? You know, I mean, I, I always look at it as just make sure that, you know, the company that you, the first thing you do is, you know, make sure they're trustworthy. Can you trust that they can be consistent? What is your artistic value? What is your infrastructure to deliver? Ask them how many weddings they actually do. That's important. You know why? It's not about the volume. It's about how consistent can they be. If you're doing 40 weddings, tell, ask them how long will it take for them to deliver. If they tell you, I want to deliver to you in 30 days, ask them how. How you can deliver this in 30 days when we know that you're doing 40 weddings a year? What's your process? What's your mm-hmm. process like? Because now, now you're talking about, are they going to lie to you? Mm-hmm. Because now you start, now you, you, you know what I'm saying? Now, you, you, now you're figuring out, are they lying to you or they're not? Mm-hmm. Is it realistic or not? People are not stupid. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. These people, people are not stupid. They know, they know when something is just, just doesn't sound right, mm-hmm. you know? Um, to us, you know, we do 500 weddings a year and we don't even blink an eye. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's always, a reason for that. I'm always weary of certain websites out there where they only show about 10 or 15 examples yeah. of mm-hmm. their work because either that shows me that it's a lack of experience or... They're only putting their best foot yeah. forward. And or, or is this the only 15 you got? No, no, no. Or, <laughs> or it happened or, to the others. That's right. I mean, I, mean, I, I will good. vouch for them too. Meaning like those that have 15 or 20 weddings a year, some of them made it not just good at marketing or they want to do their best wedding. Meaning they do very, very limited weddings just so they could give deliver to the, to the couples that they want, but they would overcharge on what they actually do. Mm-hmm. But if they're doing 15 weddings and they're charging at the same, every very standard pricing, then yeah, that's something, that's when you have to start be careful. You have to be really careful with. And if they don't have a reason why they only do 15 weddings, you have to ask them the question. So why do you only do 15 weddings a year? Mm-hmm. Know that know that there's 160,000 weddings happening in the Tri-State area in the next 18 months. Every, that has not changed. The weddings has not changed. I mean, it's like, it's like food and water, right? So... If there's, if there's a vendor that's only doing 15 weddings a year, there's a reason for that. Mm-hmm. Ask them why. So last year, Kwa, how many weddings did you put out approximately? I think we did we did, we did 500 yeah. for video. So talk about your post process, mm-hmm. you know, because you just mentioned how, how, how do you deliver? How, yep. you know, talk about the importance of that. First of all, first of all. How are you able to do that? Yeah. yeah. First of all, it's about, it starts with infrastructure. It starts with. Uh, having the right technology in place in order to uh, execute. 
So what we do is we use SANS, uh, we use NAS servers, you know, NAS and SANS actually. What the? <laughs> I'm getting real technical here. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm, see you guys. I'm sure there's some listeners that are actually, I mean, I shut down already. Me, you just, but I'm sure there's some listeners. They, really they just woke me up. Because yeah. I, <laughs> okay, let's just say servers. Okay. Right? Okay. And they attach to 20 of our computers. Mm-hmm. They, it's, it's coming from one, one source. And every so the twenty computers are able to feed from one source. Right. It starts from there. That holds all of the content. All of the content mm-hmm. from the weddings. Okay. The, the second part is also having assurance of there's backup. What so happens we, if something goes wrong with the server? Right. Absolutely. You know. And so. So what do you do in that case? So we what, what we do we use LTO tapes. It's those standards in the in the media industry. And we hold, we do, we have about 700 terabytes of data of, you know, uh, of wedding footage. It's dated back <laughs> all, to all the years. Wow. Yeah. And these tapes, they don't die. They last for 20, 30 years. Wow. You know, uh, we recycle maybe every every year we recycle it. And Depending, where do you put the dip, tapes? Dip, dip, uh, we, we offsite it into a different location mm-hmm. just in case the building catch on fire right. that the wedding doesn't go out. So right. the, if that part of infrastructure, the next part is... Making sure that we have software, we use software and tools to make sure the processes are in place. There's so much, there's so much processes in place in the post production from step one, organizing it, ingesting, but actually ingesting and then organizing it, the footage, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then having to sync the audio. Who's gonna do that? I would imagine that would. Save right. so much time that's for an right. editor to just have it Absolutely. all the footage labeled and so, organized for you. So that's part of infrastructure. That's part of processes, and mm-hmm. that's part of and that's checking off on it. Is it done or is it not done? Mm-hmm. And then having someone else check if it was done or not. Done. What, what we call is that the verification process. So what we do is it's extremely technical. I'm sorry, everybody, but <laughs> no, this is good stuff. We so when you mm-hmm. or when you ingest it. After one of our editors ingest it, we have another editor that comes in and they recheck that work that they just ingested on. So if they ingested 200 gigs of data, that second editor comes in and they verify everything. Mm-hmm. It's like, it's very intricate. Yeah. That was the first. So I so what I used to do when I started was I did that myself. I did my first day was ingested. I'm so tired. I come back the next day and verify it. And because I'm so unsure of myself again, I, I do it. I, I will verify three times. And so, you know, you can imagine that's why I worked 18, 20 hour days. Mm-hmm. It's part of the process. That would be my, I think, my number one thing. If number I were one thing. getting yeah. like, yeah. what do you do with my footage? No, you know what? That's and I right. have to say, um, this is actually really good information to, to, I mean, not that we have to know the nitty gritty of it, but right. just what you actually just said was a, uh, by the way, guys, what, what Quad just said was pretty much a very surface level of, of how all this works. <laughs> that, and I know it didn't sound that way, but it is. Um, but what's funny is um, we have, we have couples and it's, you know, understandably so, you know, it's a trailer. It's a five minute video. Mm. It can't take that long. Well, no. there's a process behind yeah, there's this a that, that process. takes. And and here's the thing. It's that, you know, I always look at it. If you don't have the footage organized properly, how are you going to execute on creating a three to five minute video and how you can create anything if it's lost? And timely. And, too. I, and, that's, and that's what happens in the whole entire industry. That's the reason why, like, you know, how I knew how to fix it. I start with that. Make sure that part is extremely tight, you know? Mm. That it's there's no errors for, for there's no room for errors there's no hiccups in there mm-hmm. there's gonna be hiccups that's why we have backups of backups mm-hmm. you know and everything else yep. do the cameras matter uh, the, the the type of camera that you're using let's talk about that equipment mm-hmm. yeah absolutely on cameras. site yeah mm-hmm. I mean I mean cameras are they're always gonna evolve mm-hmm. um, you got you know it's just, you know what it's all the cameras are. They all do almost all the similar things at the moment. Um, it's just a matter of consistency and taste um, and ergonomics, meaning, you know, how easy is it for the operator to be comfortable with it? Mm-hmm. We work off of Sony's. We went from Canon's and then we com- and then we mixed between Sony's and Canon's. And then we went from Sony, Canon, GH5, Panasonic's. And now, and now most people are on Sony's at the moment. Uh, but there's some people that mix with Canons. But what Can you we have do, one wedding shot with one camera as a Canon and one's a Sony? You could, but you had to do some work. You had to what we call it's really technical, guys. Sorry, okay. is what we call picture profiles. So what we do is we we align. So if a Canon camera is if a new say a new operator comes on board, works with us, and trained with us, and everything else, 
they have to actually configure their camera to align with the primary cameras to make sure the color matches. Okay. And then what we do, we test all the cameras to make sure they all align properly. Wow. And then if it's not tested properly, we have to recolor everything in the post-production to make sure it's seamless. There's Amazing. a lot of care. Yeah. There's a lot of care. So, so, so the, this, this is when the, the, our editors get pissed off. They say, they said, you know, they said, hey, guys, this is not a calibrated camera. Can you please calibrate it? Because you're making us do more work in post-production. Okay. Makes sense. What are we shooting in? Are you shooting in 4K? Are you shooting in no. HD? Um, well, we could shoot in 4K. We have capabilities of that. and But we mostly shoot in 1080p, 1920 by 1080 because most of the stuff is watched on the internet than on the TV. And and also, it helps our processes much... Uh, it furthers our process. Uh, it makes it more efficient. The minute... The minute we introduce 4K, it slows down the process by 10 times the amount. I did the calculation. Why? Ingesting takes a little longer. Editing takes much, takes three times longer because you're working with bigger content. Software is not that great when it comes to 4K image footage. It's just not there yet. I, I have to say, personally, I don't like the way 4K looks. I feel like you could, I mean, I, you could see the pores in someone's That's face. Right. It's you just could. too much. Yeah, yeah when, whenever I see TV that is 4K, there's something about it that looks student filmy. Yes. It takes the, the cinematic effect away I from agree it. I 100%. There's some actresses out there that require these the certain filters, filters right. because wow. it softens their wrinkles and, right. and the way they look. And the second part oh, is that Lord. most TVs, <laughs> yeah. most TVs, they come what they call true motion. So it does, you lose the cinematic look for it because it looks like a 60 frame um, television. Oh. And that's nothing that we could do, but it's, uh, but that's the reason, that's the technical side of the TVs. Mm -hmm. cool. I'm extremely technical. Sorry, everybody. No, no, no. I, I mean, but, but listen, since we're talking about post, just to kind of close this yeah. up, how long, because you have all these systems in place for efficiency, mm -hmm. talk about how long it would take our couples to receive their material, their trailer and their longer video. Well, the, the three to five minute holiday is a 30 to 60 day process, right? Uh, I think, no, it's a six week process. Yeah, four, to six four to six four weeks. To six, sorry, four yeah. to six mm -hmm. weeks. Sorry, four to six weeks. Sorry, four weeks. But the, um, the, the regular edit stuff, the, the long, what we call the regular edit, you know, some people call it the documentary version or whatever. It is. It's just a long footage. Uh, it's we, an opportunity to actually watch yeah, your wedding. Right. See a lot more content. Ours yeah. is 90 to 120 days. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Okay, and that is it's 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 down to a science because you know how many the volume we know yeah. how many w weddings are expected, we know wh who we have to work with. That's right. So it's actually all scheduled ahead and, of time. And we have about I think I don't know I think we have about sixty processes in place. So every time we knock out one task, we we knock it out and it's communicated throughout the entire team. We have supervisors on top of managers, <laughs> on top of operators. Mm -hmm. And so and so the the work is getting double checked. So once it's done, it gets checked by the the by the the lead editor and then it gets checked again by the supervisor. So it's the perfect combination for a couple because it it's a big corporation to ensure the quality. That's right. But it there's nothing about this process that feels corporate. It's such a personal emotional It is. It is process that we, a couple goes through we try to be transparent with what we do we don't you know i mean i think in the sales meeting we talk a little bit about the, some of the technical stuff but you know we don't want to make them fall asleep and blow their minds out of, you know in yeah the are water. you guys still with us here? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but i would say that it's I, I would say that it's um i think it, for them to understand that we're confident in our technical self should give them reassurance and yeah. that's the thing assurance practice right and i think it's um um I think we should build a department call assurance. <laughs> yeah. Let's actually come right back to the couple's mindset. And, you know, when it's so much of it is vision, what you're visualizing for your wedding, the, your gown, walking down the aisle, what you're visioning of your photos, of your video. What do you do when a couple comes to you and they have these strong opinions of what they want in their video and maybe even send you examples of a, of a video that they have in mind. Uh, Can I, you do this? I used to, I, I used to take, get that, and and it was always a no to me, because um, you know the conditions is always different. You can't shoot this shot, and if you're giving me a shot of this venue that has a sunset look, and then your your itinerary is totally different, you know it's it's not going to look the same. We could get the wide shot for you. That's the wide shot that you're looking for. 
but it's not going to look the same because the sun is totally different and the conditions are totally different. So usually we always kind of deter them from that and make them understand that, that, hey, you signed up. This is our style. This is what you signed up for. Otherwise, we just can't, we just can't service it because some people come to us that, hey, can you just shoot regular video for us? I said, we could, but that's not, that's who, not we who, are, we are. who we are. And here's the thing. If we're if we if we could if we put ourselves that we're only money people that we're only about getting the business, then yes, it would make a lot of sense to get the job. But we tell our companies, we tell the people that we work with, or who we are, and what we're valued for. They take pride in their work, the shooters, the cinematographers, the artists. If we give them a job that was just non autistic, <laughs> they would leave the company. Mm -hmm. They will hate the company and we lie to them. That's not who we are. That's a beautiful that point. That is a good point. Yep. So, um, you know, so much of the day is scheduling, mm -hmm. right? The way the day starts, the way the day finishes. Ahead of the wedding, I think, is where all of the time needs to be put into properly putting together an itinerary for the day oh, yeah. so that the videographers are given... The, the time needed to mm -hmm. capture what they need. Same thing with the photographers. Um, how do you suggest a couple structure their day to help out the video team? To structure the day? Um, well, we break it down to very, keep it real simple. Bride prep, groom prep, if there's a, there is a groom prep, ceremony, photo, photo session, and a reception. And bride prep, what's, let's, let's break that down. Mm -hmm. Bride prep, what do we get and how much time do we need? We always we always like the hour, a little bit more than an hour. Ideally, ninety minutes, you know. But usually that doesn't happen. But ideally, it's ninety minutes because you say one hour is really forty five minutes because the the guys have to pack up, leave, get to the car, and leave by the hour, right? To get to the ceremony beforehand. Um, an hour is very tight because the the operators has to set up the dress because more than likely usually ninety percent of the time the couples never set up the dress they just leave it in the closet or they leave it hanging somewhere, um, and 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 then and then also the videographer is also behind the scenes they take they the photographers are taking the lead of the day they always have to wait on the photographer. Mm -hmm. And they you, always have to wait. When you talk about setting up the dress just for, for listeners, mm -hmm. you literally mean positioning in such certain ways That's that right. they could get the dress in a certain lighting, That's different right. variations of the, the dress, dress. The details, the um you know, the the ring shots, the earrings, the detail, you know, picture frames, whatever that is. Yeah. And relationships. Relationship, relationship between, right. you know, the bride and her family, right. the groom and, and his that's family. Why, and, that's why ideally we always like to have two at the bride prep, one at the groom prep. With, for cost purposes, ideally it would be four, two grooms, two brides. You know, one, while one is doing details, the other one is shooting behind the scenes of of the bridesmaids, the and, emotion, of and the, the emotions, the the family, why shots, everything. I'm really glad that you said that because I do get that question a lot from from you know why why do you need two people in my room that day? Mm -hmm. And FYI, brides. Have your makeup done when your crews are getting mm -hmm. there. If if you're not done, have actually, it actually, no, 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 no. At the last few stages, photographers like to have the makeup all done. Video don't like it all done. Is that right? That's right. Make video likes it when it's raw, so we can see the makeup being put on. I always tell the brides the tail end of it, mm -hmm. so we can kind of find a nice compromise. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So so you know when they're when they're doing it, so sometimes it's sometimes it's maybe halfway done, mm -hmm. and then we just do f like you know touch ups. And so then it's we a story, that. so you can see it evolve and progress. Yeah. So we can see a story. So we're putting a story together. I mean, we like that. You know, I mean, from when I I could tell I could speak for myself. When I used to shoot, I used to shoot what we call macro lenses. I used to like to shoot eyelashes, like like. Tight shot of the eyelash and the eyes just blinking and then everything's all blurred in the background and you got a beautiful eye <laughs> and a lash and, a, and yeah, a very, something something yeah. about that looks great and then all of a sudden it cuts to the wide shot of the scenery the whole picture the yeah. whole picture mm -hmm. and it's like oh that's it, cool and mm -hmm. that's cool you know talk to me Qua, about um pre groom prep yeah so you're you're a videographer you're walking into groom prep so what what are your focuses there. Um, the guys always tell me, what, what are you getting? You know, what's going on? Here? Well, we, we do, you know, we do this, you know, we like to do the standards of getting, the, getting their tux on, uh, getting their watches on, if it's a watch or whatever jewelry they have on, 
Mm-hmm. If they have a gift exchange, definitely a card reading if mm-hmm. they have a card reading. Mm-hmm. Uh, we like to get them being guys. Card reading, by the way, guys, some couples will just, yeah. you know, write something sentimental and we always recommend share like it. That, yeah. yeah. It just it's yeah. an opportunity to give Tell to a story. give the couple a really more helpful story. For me, yeah. 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 Especially if you're not telling that saying like personal vows at the ceremony, right. then cards really matter. Yeah. 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 Just um, think of it in the way that we're making a film without a script. So right. mm-hmm. the more we have from your own words in right. your own hearts the, right. the better it will serve you right. and give you your memories right. the, the groom prep is really set up your setup you know it, it could be uh you know it could be a uh, a shot for them drinking the shots just those memories that's to get the day going right we're capturing that but from a storytelling step perspective that's what we're telling the story for that's all it's you know it's simple i mean i think i think the videos have it easier than the photographers because we're behind the scenes but still sometimes the photographers we're not working not, not our photographers but other photographers if they're not if they don't get what they need to get they actually kind of step in and direct a little bit too they do mm-hmm. yep mm-hmm. let's talk about that dynamic actually mm-hmm. hold on the photographer because i do want to get into mm-hmm. the dynamic between photographer and videographer but just finishing up the day so so we leave prep and then we're either heading on over to the ceremony site or we're going into a first look. So in some weddings, you know, the ceremony happens first and then you do a photo session or it's the reverse. So let's say that there is a photo session before the ceremony. That's typically launched with a first look, right? And then the rest of the photo session. Is it important for videographers to get the photo session? Yeah, absolutely. Um, the photo session is, you know... Um, so, so the photo session is is a collaboration between the photographer and the video team, right? Uh, we like to kind of create our moments too. Sometimes, sometimes we keep it natural too. So, some, let's 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 pick a park for an example. To capture the concept from a video standpoint, is if they're walking down the road or they're walking down the grass, we capture that. If you have a steady cam, we haven't talked about that yet, but. You know, we catch them walking down and we might shoot it in 60 frames, meaning slow motion, or we shoot it in 24 frames, normal motion, right? That's content. And then what we do when we, they're just talking, we just tell them, just talk. We don't really need to give them in much direction. Just talk. And then we'll, the camera will find you, you know, like Woody Allen type of style, right? Camera finds you. If we, might, we might say, hey, we need more content. He said, hey, can you dance in the middle of the park? Solo that. Pretend that the song is coming along. That's a beautiful context. Camera spins very around. Very romantic. Well, very romantic. Hey, you know, can you, can you, you know, there's a bridge or something like that. Hey, can you just go and, and, you know, go, go behind her and, and just give her a hug or give her a kiss on the side of the cheek. You know, that's, that's a little direction from us. I said, we don't need to explain to you what that kiss is supposed to feel like. But, 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 but what it does <laughs> it's a in, wedding. What it does in the video is it just yeah. elevates it so much. Yeah. It's so or, much romantic. And it helps yeah. show off the venue as yeah. well. Yeah. So we're, we're not so photographers have a harder time because they have to create the poses for those looks too. Right. Right? And they have to be all that. Video is like, hey, can you just, you know, uh, you know, can you just, just walk over there? Just walk over <laughs> there. Just walk. Can you just, just ho- do this? Can you just do, and just hold each other's hands and just walk? Don't worry about it. the camera will find you. That's that's out that's out that's the way we direct. It's not it's nothing really complex about it. Um, we're not telling you how you look. <laughs> Everything is supposed to feel natural. So the purpose for your video is it now is showing that the connection between the two that's of you, right. the romantic moments. That's right. If you're involving wedding party, it it's going to show that dynamic, the the right. fun energy yeah, the between friends. everybody. Right. So it helps us, um, you know, get those shots mm-hmm. to work in who these people are. That's right. Sometimes, 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 you know, sometimes we do a little bit more direction if we see an opportunity. Mm-hmm. I saw I had a there's a couple that we worked with, and he had this this uh, necklace, and it was a meaningful necklace from I was given to her as a, and and he had this it was given with this beautiful book, mm-hmm. and I told him, you know what, just just Claps your um your mm-hmm. your hands with around the necklace it, yeah. around it and then and close your eyes, and and that was it. That yeah. was it. And that was one shot. It was just one shot moment. And you know, and it was gonna be because he's not gonna redo it again. He just remembered it and just did it, and it just looked beautiful. One bride told me um that her maid of honor said something to her that was just really um like an inside joke. I guess you could say something really personal at the photo session, 
And she remembered that joke specifically. And she said, you guys captured that during my photo session because they caught that exact moment when she was whispering something to her and the bride was bursting out laughing. Oh, that's so valuable. So that's a really good example of just... Yes, let let us cover your photo session. We're with you the whole day. It's a complete but the, story. But, but the video is totally different from from, from the photography. The, I'm sure the photographer's not there waiting for that moment of the whisper That's right. to take the shot. They, but the unless you actually unless you actually see that and plan in your head, right. you know. But the video is just rolling, getting life That's happening. Right. That's right, getting live actions. That's of right. It. That's great. Uh, so we are mirroring the same exact schedule as a photographer. We're yeah. just sharing the space. That's right. Sharing, uh, you know, mm-hmm. taking turns, but it is the exact same schedule. We always look for the photographer. Yeah. We always look for the photographer. Uh, you and know, usually we are the yeah. photographer, that's but right. that's a separate story. Yeah. That's right. Um, we spoke about ceremony. That's right. So moving from photo session into the ceremony now, oh, yeah. um, you know, do we need to be there early? Yes. How do you? We're what? always 30 minutes early to the ceremony at the very least. Um, Why? And because we got to set our cameras up. We don't want to <laughs> we don't want to barge in and then set up our cameras. It's just imagine this seven, 5 minutes before that happens and all of a sudden you you got hold on guys, let me get my cameras going. Click click snap, put the <laughs> lens on, <laughs> open the Pelican case, pop the cameras open. All right, I'm ready to go. Oh, let me let me by the way, let me also hook up your audio too. <laughs> don't don't like, yeah. Hang on, don't walk down the aisle. We got we got to we got remember this Video is more than just the video. You got to put the sound to it. The audio is just yeah. as important. So for a ceremony, we have to we put we we put two mics on the groom. We put a mic on the priest. And we have to fight with the priest sometimes to put a mic on them because they say, "Why do I need the mic?" We have to explain to them that it's for the couples, so they have a memory. And then they say, "Oh, okay, it's no for- problem." <laughs> Not that microphone, the yeah. other one for the video. And then, and then, and then we take mic. And then you know how crazy we are when it comes to backups. We put mics all over the place that you don't even know where we're putting yeah, it. Yeah, so in like order the to priest the is using something Can for amplification. Can you just um, yeah. be, elaborate a little bit on the audio? Yeah. Like, w- what's what is this device? Okay, so yeah, so we use lavaliers. Uh, we use what we call a Zoom H1. They're small devices that we put in the goon's pocket. Mm-hmm. Um, we put two of them. One one as the primary, and the other one as the backup. Oh, interesting. Mm-hmm. The reason is because sometimes the groom likes to put their hand in the pocket and pop the cord. Ah. Oh. And it goes away. If they pop both of the mics, then we know that it was on purpose. On oh, it was done on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Oh, God. You know, and there's no excuse to that. So we put two mics on them. And this is solely for the ceremony because we've right. had the question come up a few times. Well, 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 That's well, why we don't want to be recorded yeah. <laughs> yeah. for the rest of the day. This is solely for the How ceremony. Long the are you mics recording come, me. Yeah, exactly. They come off right when you're finished. Yeah, so once it, it's only for the ceremony. We don't put a mic on the bride because of the dress, and we don't want to make it look ugly or anything like that too. We put a we put a we put a mic on the priest, a lavalier on the priest as well, um, and then we we put a mic on if it has a podium, we put a mic on the podium, and if there's a speaker, we put a mic on the speaker. If there's a mixer, we put a mic on the mixer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and if if the couple, by the way, guys, if um if, if you do choose to read letters prior to the ceremony when you're getting ready, that's right. That we would be another there. time where we would you know lav you guys up as well. And the reception, um, mm-hmm. basically. Yes. So we 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 don't mic the grooms up. We mic the uh, the speakers up, and we and we hook up with the DJ at the reception. At the reception, mm-hmm. but sometimes it's the fifty fifty shot. Sometimes the DJs screw up the audio, and they overblow the the audio, and there's nothing we could do. So we have a backup that we run on the speaker itself, you know, right. and that kind of takes it. We don't put a lab on the on the speakers. Because we, we don't have time to chase. It would chase take too much time to chase, yeah. To, to, you know, because here it is. You know, we're all about the experience. We're about the moment. The minute you call them up, you, you know, you don't want to set, wait two minutes. The music has just died out. And then we're going to mic them up. And like, hold on, guys. Let me Hang put on, the audience of yeah, 300 hold, people. Yeah, Let's we're not just, doing that. Uh, so we there's don't, a we through don't do line that. I'm noticing, and, which is and, like and backup, the, right? And then, and then, and then they ha- someone has to do it and then have to go back to the camera to reposition, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. It's already a lot of work just to prep everything up. And then we have to also coordinate with the major dean on where they're going to stand. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and if they don't stand properly, then we have to, so we're not going to tell them to change on the spot. We have to move the camera and, and adjust. So going back to the ceremony. So Natasha asked, you know, getting there early, which we spoke about that. Um, mm-hmm. Is there anything else you can add to coverage for the ceremony? Um, You know, I mean... It's contingent on how many cameras that you have. Mm-hmm. Right. And then that's where your artistic decision. If you have two, it's pretty much standard. 
mm-hmm. your standard coverage. You got your center and you got your left shot. Mm-hmm. Sorry, brides, you don't have a reaction shot. You don't have your perspective shot. Because Do you, you get any cameras. guest shot reaction shots with a second camera? No, not really. Uh, if it if say if there's a dead zone, there's a dead zone, then maybe we mm-hmm. switch the camera. Center camera has a hard time doing it because we're on a wider, sh- we're on a longer lens, wider shot, and then the minute yet the minute you change the zoom, you have to refocus, then bring it back. Mm-hmm. It's just too, there's it's priorities. A, yeah, there's priorities. Yeah. So we we make a we make a very decision a decision. We tell our couples that two cameras. There's really slim to none chance to have reaction shots. Mm-hmm. It's, it's really that, that's the bottom line. Three cameras, maybe. Three cameras is not not a guaranteed reaction shot either, because we're covering three angles, right? Three angles, but it's now you got your again you got your your groom, you got your center, and you got your bride shot. Two cameras, you only got the, you know you only you got the reaction shot of the groom, but you're not gonna have that camera go around to get the bride, right? You're not doing that. Mm-hmm. It's a, it's completely logistical. Right. Yeah. Four cameras guaranteed reaction shots. Mm-hmm. So now we're leaving the ceremony. We're heading on into the cocktail hour. So mm-hmm. timing wise, you definitely want to make sure that you've been able to accomplish the mm-hmm. photos needed at this time. Yeah. So that when you when the cocktail hour starts, that you can right. enjoy yourself. So here's as a the couple. thing. Here's the thing about the ceremony. I mean, yeah. Here's the thing about the cocktail hour too. If you have three cameras, two cameras are usually with the photo with the photo session. If this photo session is happening during that time, mm-hmm. the third camera goes into the reception capturing details. Meaning, mm-hmm. getting the the tables all set up, the flowers, the flowers, the details, working with hooking up the audio, the DJ, right? That's three cameras. Now you take away, you have two. You take, you have two. The, the uh, one person. Oh, now you only get one camera covering the photo session, and the other one's doing that. So, yeah. And if you it depends have on one, logistic. it depends on itinerary. Now, it's not always the same like that, though. Right. It depends on itinerary. Right. Some couples don't have photo sessions during, during the cocktail time. hour. Exactly. That's right. Right. And what are things that we're focusing on in the cocktail hour if the couple is attending? We're getting the crowd. We're getting. Yeah, we we don't we don't really want to shoot people eating. People first people are uncomfortable. That's the most the least. We shoot a, we shoot a little bit about some memories that what kind of food you served, but we don't really focus on that. And then at the same time, we want the crew to eat so, so they have the energy to finish the night. You so know? that's a nice opportunity for the crew. That's, to eat. that's right. Mm-hmm. And um, I would imagine they use that that time to catch up on some of the details, the place card settings. And- sometimes, sometimes, um, sometimes it's it sucks because. We like to have it sh- done when it's happening, not w- when after it's been happened. Oh, so it's live. Yeah, I see. So we it's like not it live. Just- Sometimes we go about and we actually recreate the scene. So we actually we actually ask the waiter or the waitress, "Hey, can you put, put a the glass knife down. the glass put down real quick? <laughs> uh-huh. and we just shoot that okay. because it's been pre done already. You know. Interesting. Those are little details that I I didn't even know, but I've seen it. So and this many happens times. during like your. I'm sorry when the reception is getting prepared and when they're. Oh, got it. That's right. Mm-hmm. It's more interesting. It's engaging to watch things develop mm-hmm. yeah. and evolve rather than just. And remember, cover it. it's well, also I, also that you know people forget that the humans stress level actually really matters too. You put one operator in there, they want to do their best job, but you kind of buckle them down that they can't do their best job because you know they want to cover cocktail but they can't they gotta they gotta hook up with the audio they want to cover the details but they can't and so they had they're on the, they're in the bind where they have to make a better decision on what they get what they could actually do right? everything is simplified it's so, it's, so it's, it's, it's a very stressful situation see i actually appreciate these types of conversations because it really just um you know, when couples approach us sometimes, it's it's just that they don't understand. I mean, why would they necessarily about coverage and what goes into it? But when you just simply explain it that way, put mm-hmm. yourself in their shoes, you know, and right. you, you see the details in these video in, in this video, but guess what? That detail was happening simultaneously to that other detail. So mm-hmm. how do you think that was captured? Right. A couple is rarely going to say details are important. Mm-hmm. Details are going to be important to them if they're sentimental. True. I have a you know, picture of a, a relative that I've lost around the bouquet. Mm-hmm. Please make sure that you get this. Mm-hmm. So something that's meaningful, yes. Mm-hmm. But what it's a very subtle difference when you are getting these details, uh, going back to just the way the sun is coming through the that's window right. and, and mm-hmm. hitting a branch or hitting the dress. And you mentioned the eyelash, like, like the little, eyelash. little details like that. Or even the example of, you know, the maid of honor whispering something to the bride that was super important that I think – is so important for them, but they wouldn't. Yeah. They wouldn't be you here. You wouldn't create it in they, your mind ahead that's of right. time. But together, it it makes it that much more cinematic yeah. and and artistic. It's that little ingredient in the soup mm-hmm. that you just don't know what it is, but it's there. That's right. <laughs> so right. timeline. Let's finish up the reception. So cocktail hour. We've set up 
we've gotten uh, the necessary details if we've had the ample crew in order to do that. We've set up the audio. Now reception is starting and we are covering the events of the reception. So certainly first thing to happen is going to be the introductions, right? Yes. Okay. And that's either going to be just very simple one camera or we're now we're able to cut to some of the reaction shots. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, you know what? The intros are, it sounds easy that just coming in, but it's not that easy because it's a lot of things going on. Major Dean wants to jump into the shot, cover the, cover the camera. Um, you know, uh, sometimes if it's a wedding planner, they make the cameras move. Um, if it's a, uh, um, sometimes the guest wants to jump in the way, peek in, camera's got to move. If it's one camera, if that camera moves, that shot is gone. Sorry. Nothing else we could do. Unless you want, unless you want someone's back to the camera. Mm -hmm. But we have to cut away. So what happens is that now we got to figure out how to cut to the next, to how, what's the transition shot? So two cameras is, well, we always have one that's closer to the door now. They always have a clean shot of it. You have the wide shot of it. Now you have the, now you at least you can cut back and forth. You have a third camera. You, that might be shooting over the heads of people. So it looks more cinematic. Or you shoot reactions of that. So you have cutaways. Should the crew stay till the end? It really depends on, you know, what kind of energy was delivered during the party. Mm -hmm. That's if right. The, if the party happened, you know, um, if there was a party, real party, you know, you know, then before the cake cutting, then they don't need to stay because after we've that. for it's story right. telling purposes. It's we've purposes, gotten right. a good end. Typically, to the story for typically, our typically the people that that dances on the dance floor doing hundreds, well, us doing thousands of weddings, it's usually the same people that dances on the floor. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> from the start to the end. Every couple, you know, different cultures are different too. Indian weddings are different. Greek weddings are different. Jewish weddings are different. Sometimes the horror, there's no announcement. It, it just happens. Mm -hmm. so, and we got to be ready that, that you know, the minute that chair goes up, you better be capturing now, that. Now, do you get on a chair to capture No, it? no, 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 no. We shoot on the floor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but we have to make sure we're positioned. So the mm -hmm. camera's always on standby. So we don't try to go crazy and roll the whole five hours at the reception. It's just the, it's just that when there's something happening, we're capturing it. You be know? aware, be there. Yeah, mm -hmm. and if there's nothing, we're always capturing the photo booth, we're capturing other other stuff around it. All yeah. the, the main yeah. events. The main events, okay. Um, okay, drone. so yeah, segue, let's talk about tools. Yeah, um, I want to talk about the drone first because okay. this is something that's, um, it comes up for me constantly where couples are requesting it, you know, asking about it. Um, now, we, we spent a lot of time during this podcast talking about coverage points in a story. Um, specifically two cameras and three cameras. And, you know, I would imagine, you know, you have um, a two camera shoot and you have a couple that's booking a drone, which sometimes can be done if maybe if just everything's in one location, but it's not going to, you know, you may not have those epic, epic drone shots, um, as Igor told me. So mm -hmm. uh, talk I'll to me about the drone. Through. Yeah, sure. walk me through the drone process. Drones are always a fun thing to have. It gets used maybe three or four times in a, in a highlight. And it gets used more times in the in the regular edit, but they're usually used for establishment shots, meaning it just kind of opens up the, the story, it opens up the story, and then maybe ends the story, and then it might be a nice transition in the middle. Mm -hmm. So when usually. a couple says to you, which they they do to me also, you know, and they they usually do understand there's going to be it's tastefully used a three or four shots. Um, why can't you just fly the drone up in the air and take that shot and come back down? So tell me about that. <laughs> can't you just throw in for a couple of yeah, yeah. shots? Talk, talk to me about talk to me about what it takes to get those. Because there's legalities shots. around drones. There's this regulations around how you take off how you take the drones off. You know. So what we do is we don't hire people that are unlicensed to fly drone because it's a liability. Mm -hmm. If that drone actually hits somebody or causes an accident. Or whatever that is, don't laugh. <laughs> I know you're laughing. Don't laugh. It you know it's a liability. I actually had a call from the from the Stony Brook um, and uh, the owner of the Stony Brook and the and the Shadow Brook. Sorry, Shadow Brook and the it's Venetian. Mm -hmm. They increased their workers' comp insurance and all the insurance policies because one because there was a drone incident. No, it was because of the drone. One okay. of the drones hit cut somebody. <gasps> it flew and it cut the bride. Oh. Horrible. That's horrible. You can't just, all right, guys, I'm just to fly a drone and it's just going to happen. You know, I mean, it, you know, the drones are getting smaller, but some people are still bringing in the Inspire One Pro. They're giant 
drones with big propellers. Are and, they loud? And they're loud. I, <laughs> I've seen a drone where they fly a drone over a ceremony <laughs> while the oh. vows are happening. <laughs> that is awful. Oh my God. So the drone needs to be shot before the ceremony or after the yeah, ceremony. Yeah, so, so, so during. understanding drone usage is very important. I get that there's drone shots for the epic shots, but guess what? It has to be staged. And it, the drone operator is not just going to yell out the window, hey, can you do this and do that? And try to get them perfectly done. No, I mean, the, then the drone has to go. Say he's, say he's done in the venue and you're at the balcony. The drone has to operate, is going to do one or two things. They're going to be at the balcony conducting, and then you got to wait a couple minutes. So the drone operator goes downstairs, get the get the drone, fly, get it prepared, turn it on, fly it, and then compose the shot. Now you're 15 minutes in to the shot. Mm-hmm. While that person, while, if the drone operator is the director, has about just lost 15 minutes of creating the content of other things too. Got it. So now you have a, so that's why the drone, a separate drone op is very important in my opinion. Um, I know, I know, I know couples want to be budgeted. So they accept that the uh, director, when they can get will quick, fly. will mm-hmm. fly during a photo session. But guess what? You just lost 15 minutes of photo session on the other content too, mm-hmm. because of the mm-hmm. drone shot. Mm-hmm. There's a compromise to it, right? Mm-hmm. So to clarify, a red zone is we are sharing airspace with airplanes, helicopters. Uh, so we have to clear an area through FAA. It's it's an actual airspace. It's it's a real thing. So if you're in a red zone, you're either not allowed to fly because, you know, perhaps there's a helicopter pad nearby or a hospital or an airport. The city's all red zoned out. So you go, you, you, you bought, if you bought a drone and you go to the city, it won't even allow you to take off unless you break the firmware or you, you bypass it, which is obviously you fly and then that's illegal. You could get arrested for that. Mm-hmm. So it's, and there's it's a lot of, I didn't it's know that. Thing. So yeah. it knows where you are and it actually shuts down. Like it won't. No, even, no, no, it won't fly. No, because it the, won't fly. No, it's been regulated. Yeah. So you go to Disney, you can't even take off. Like the drone would not. No, it won't physically won't wow. go. Wow, interesting. And sometimes, you know, sometimes there's some like, you know, if there's like some sort of magnetic stone that which you're never gonna know, sometimes the drone won't even take off. It won't go. It happens. Wow, I did not know yeah. that. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, because we're not gonna fly a drone without a GPS. <laughs> That's a danger mm-hmm. zone. That's a dangerous too. So yeah. I would imagine that the drone operator also needs to be very, very aware of the couple's itinerary. Prior. Oh yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, so I mean, you know when when you can fly and when you fly. when the, when so the opportunity right. is. And typically, like you said, it's during photo session time. You do it well. It's during times where I w- I would say yeah, photo session obviously mm-hmm. where there's no events happening. There's yeah. no coverage right. of like maybe yeah. a cocktail. Or hour. they may come in the morning just to get the uh, establishment shot of the venue. Venue, okay. Makes sense. Those type of stuff. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. And also, it's important to get the drone shots the day of your wedding, too, because there's some stock footage out there. That's right. But it how just are may you going to match the quality match. of the yeah. day and the yeah. season? And We you get know. questions about that, too. But they, I, Well, we've done, we've done this to be before. Um, we've had it where it was just a bad uh, overcast day or like it was drizzling and just can't use it. We've done it where we came back the following day. When it was just overcast, or and we got took, the shot. And got the shot. That's so. That's also another option that, very we, caring. that we don't really offer it that often, but we can. Like say, hey, you know, if you only wanted to hire the drone for for just for establishments shots, we could do that too. And you don't have to do it the wedding day. We could do it afterwards. But just know that it's going to be more establishment shots only. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Very you know, cool. Not might you know it might not be your wedding, but you got that type of shot. So that's one of the cinematic tools mm-hmm. that can be offered and used during a wedding. What are some of the other tools outside of a camera that can well, really elevate the look of a well, video? We call, one we call is a, um, a Steadicam. Um, they're not Steadicams anymore. They will be called gimbals, but we call it Steadicam just so for the lingo, so it's just so, so couples can understand it. It's pretty much your moving camera, so it doesn't shake like an earthquake. It's not. It's, it's not, my favorite. It's not your camera on held on the shoulder. It's held on a, uh, you know, like a stick. It's on, yeah. On, not a stick. It's a. It's a. It's a gimbal device. You mm-hmm. know, and it's a very sophisticated technology. And you move the camera. You shake the camera. It just not shake. It just moves very smoothly. I would imagine you have to be skilled 
in and yes. of your, itself to 100 percent percent yeah this is you know the operators are all skilled for the what well, certain operators are very skilled for the uh, for the steady cams, and it's also it's not just taking the camera and flying it. There's also understanding how to use the camera that's on the gimbal. This focusing, you know, imagine flying the camera and then you're out of focus. Right, <laughs> right. So it's a separate camera that they're using. Yeah, uh, no, it, well, yes. Yeah, usually we have so the operator would come with two op or two cameras, or sometimes they would take the camera and they re kind of reconfigure it. But to, to, the, to the to the gimbal. To the gimbal. So mm-hmm. but to make gimbal? it a, gimbal. To the gimbal, gimbal. right? Or to the steady cam. We call it mm-hmm. steady cam for now. Um. Yes, but usually the you know most operators have two cameras anyway, so mm-hmm. they put another camera on the gimbal, and sometimes, uh, you know, with the technology getting better, we change our lenses on the gimbal now. So sometimes you get the long lens type of steady cam shots. So what is this doing? What is the gimbal doing? How does it um advancing the video? And why would somebody want a moving type of shot? It's a moving image. Moving image. So give us an example. Um. So you just imagine that you're walking through the park. Do you want the camera on a tripod and just kind of... Where you're walking away from the camera? Walking away from the camera or walking towards the camera? Or do you want a camera that's following you? Like a, like a, uh, like a track dolly. I don't know if people understand that. But uh, yeah, just imagine that, you know, the camera is with you while you're walking. Or your first dance. Or mm-hmm. you, fir- you think about yeah, your first spinning dance. Spinning around you. Is spinning your- around you during the, you know, the 360 spin. So while while the while while he dips her, the camera's spinning around you and picks. There's something about that moment. Yeah, mm-hmm. you could have it the same type of moment on a locked down camera, but it's not the same visual. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it same adds feeling. the drama. Right. You right. can you can flare out on a on a train of a gown before she walks down the aisle, and just that touch of drama that it adds. It 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 builds that anticipation of the moment of her coming mm-hmm. down. Mm-hmm. So in, in the film world, there's a reason why we, why we spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on tools to, to make it look more cinematic for the film. Yeah. These are things that are used for in shots that's movies used for, all the time. For, for shots that are only used for three seconds, four seconds, but the value of that shot and the story it tells. What it can do to that moment. Oh my yeah. God. It's, it's, you know, it's, mm-hmm. you know, it, it's timeless. Yeah. Any other tools that, yeah, we used another thing called the slider. Um, it's very straightforward. It's a camera on a on a rail, uh, on a three to five foot rail. Most people are using three foot rails now for convenience, and um, and it's typically used for now. We use it typically used for detail shots. So it's kind of like you know, think about your dress shot, and you don't want the the camera to be a lockdown shot or a pan up. You know, it's just very typical shot. Instead, maybe the camera is just pushing forward and there's something in the foreground, like a chair or something like that, and it kind of passes the chair. It's a totally different look. It's smooth. It's beautiful. Um, you know, I mean, we see that in, in movies all the time, too, with dollies and, um, you know, that's... that's So it's used interchangeably yeah. with the steady cam, but, but yeah. for different purposes. Yeah, but we, we typically use it for details nowadays, like for flower shots, for detail shots, for picture shots. Uh, we do it doing photo sessions a lot too, you know. So there's so many people involved during the day. If you have multiple crew members, how's the communication go on? Like I always wonder when there's a first look about to happen, how do you keep them from mm-hmm. seeing each other? In the past, we used to use walkie talkies and like like you know CIA type of stuff. You put an earpiece and we communicate. Um, we and then we started doing a lot of texts problem about the phone stuff it looks like we're not working when we're on the phone and it's stupid that it just looks it looks it looks horrible when we're on the phone when, when the ceremony is happening you know mm-hmm. and then you're not paying attention to the camera so but we get but because we work so much so well together now it's just they our producers pair up the the, the second shooters with the directors um and usually they just look at each other and they know exactly and, they know. and so it's like it's just a Human and also with text, not every venue has great reception That's right. too. So if you're relying on right. you know communicating with technology, it's it's, good luck. it's it's almost like sign language, and it's also and it's also uh, uh, pre planning. Yeah. Hey, this is what you're gonna do. You know, you're gonna you're gonna be over here with a long lens of an 85 millimeter or 50 millimeter or 7200 millimeter, and you're gonna shoot this over the head as they come in. Make sure you rack the focus when they're done with the when, when they're done with the intros. You're gonna switch your lens. You're gonna move over here and you prepare for the for the toast. 
So the director's in charge of the, of director's the look. in charge of all of that. And, right. and that is why we're able to achieve a very, I, right. I hate to use the word formulaic, mm -hmm. but I use that because it's, it's consistent. It's consistent, mm -hmm. right. And now well, we're able to give the footage over to the editing team and it's really that's right. workable. It's important, it's important that, you know, we have a whole, it's important that our, con our communication is extremely consistent because we, you know, it's, it's the only way you, you're going to have this, the, the, the process is done right. Otherwise, anything outside that process, it's going to create inconsistency. Absolutely. That's right. You know what we didn't talk about is the importance of music for the highlight video. How is that done? How is that achieved? Mm -hmm. And what's the story there? Because sometimes couples will come in and have mm -hmm. an idea. We definitely want this song. Right. Um, do you recommend that? Do you not recommend that? How's um, the music chosen? I mean, we're pretty flexible. Um, so there's two things to it. One, we have we have a new process. Well, was the process has been about a year and a half ago. We send out the forms uh, for the couples to fill out on what songs they want. We actually pre-fill the songs that we think are great for weddings, and they're usually instrumentals. And things that go into the selection, just so you know it is unique, are things mm -hmm. like the information that we've gathered from you guys so far. That's right. Your venue alone is going to give us a lot of insight mm -hmm. as to the type of couple that you guys are, you are, and the tone of the wedding. And the layout of the day. That's and, right. And That's also, well. and also sometimes it's not, people, uh, the music, we get excited when we hear new music too. We just like it, new music. We just feel like it's, you know, it speaks to the editor. Fresh too, yeah. It's fresh. Mm -hmm. It tells a story. Um, you know, if you think about it, when you watch a movie and you hear a score, is that what you listen to every single day at home? No. No. It complements the story. It complements stuff. So if the if the editor has in their mind, based on the itinerary, based on the information that they gathered, these are kind of like just – they just select songs that they think they could edit to and that are great. A lot of couples kind of take the examples that we have already and they say, I want that song. I don't want that song. And then that's cool too. And some couples, they want the, the dead set on their own songs. Problem about that is that it's not that cinematic when you're doing songs like you know, uh, shot, 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 <laughs> you know, <laughs> or, or you're doing a kid rock song in there. You yeah. Know? How does the sentiment of the yeah. ceremony fit yeah. into that? Yeah. 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 It, it, you know, some people, your favorite song might not be the answer for that, you know, yeah. more impactful to just have it right. support the story. So, but, mm -hmm. but, but what we do is we're extremely flexible and we, we want our couples to be really happy and be satisfied because some of them, you know, who's, I look at it as this, is like, who's for us to say what's more important to them? If music is really important to them, we just let them know that it's gonna. If you want this type of party music, then you then your stuff is gonna look like a music video. Is that okay? It's not what we really do, but we're willing to do that because. But we cap the footage is, be is absolutely beautiful, but the edit is not gonna be towards that style, you know. But if you wanting if you wanting what you bought into us for, right? Uh, then then we recommend these type of songs. And then you got to trust us. That's part of assurance. That's part of trust, right? Now, if you absolutely, you know, um, don't like it, then we're then that's our fault. Then we actually end up redoing it. <laughs> but but mm -hmm. most of the time, ninety eight percent of the time, most couples really truly like it and they committed to it. You know, that's great. But then, but the couples sign off on the song. We don't fully check off on it. So they might go through a, t a list of ten songs, twenty songs. Until they're actually sure on what they want and then they check off on it and then we move forward with it. Okay. You know, it's very rare that they actually change their mind during the process. One thing that came up a lot during our conversation today is backup, 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 like backing up the technology, backing up the uh, audio during, you know, during any time course, we're getting yeah. capturing audio. Mm -hmm. um, I would imagine that there's a lot of backing up of equipment, right? Yeah, does, does the crew keep backups of everything? What do you do if there's an emergency with the crew? Well, we our producers have people on standby for crews um, and, and availability, and because our crew is pretty much on a, um, uh, we're pretty vast on our on our on our team. Some people, you know, we can't help if there's a flat tire. 
So usually, if usually our we would have to comp- compromise, and typically, if there's a second shooter, then we cover that, and mm-hmm. until that person gets up running again, right? If it's a single shooter, yes, the producer has to work a little harder to make sure that we have a, some sort of backup just mm-hmm. in case, mm-hmm. just in case. Yeah. Um, but that's part of also part of the trust part on our end, making sure that we work with crews that can work during the sick when they're sick. You know, that, you know, they're not going to call out on us. They're not going to do that. Is there a guarantee? There's never a guarantee. That's the, that's the honest truth. Right. Um, but at least that, at least that I could trust them at a hundred percent. And that, that's enough for me to say that, you know, they're not going to cancel on us. They're not going to, you know, screw us over. So in the, I don't even know how many weddings we've done to date, but you know, we've grown to 500 a year. Over 2000 weddings. Over 2000. Has there ever been one wedding where we've not been able to deliver a crew member? No. Okay. So- the Never. plan that we have in place is is very solid. Mm-hmm. If if we our mindset, if we actually missed that on one wedding, then we had lost our business. Mm-hmm. We did something really wrong with our business, and that's no excuse. Mm-hmm. That's, Between our large team, right. there's always somebody that yeah. can yeah. That's, step in. Mm-hmm. That's a massive accountability issue that we would have. We've been lucky for the last seven years doing this. That mm-hmm. uh, that hasn't happened, and that you know it's not from crew though. Stuff from crew, it's producers. So you want to go really technical. <laughs> you know how we do it, right? We we use we use an application called Slack, and we create channels. And every single time we do a a job, there's a Slack channel. Every That's, couple has, every couple their, has own their own channel. Every couple has any, their own Slack. Any and every detail about that couple's logistics That's would be right. communicated on that channel. There's oh, there's always two producers on every single job. If there's 15 weddings on that weekend five weddings in that day, the producers on every single channel. If there's some sort of emergency, you know, then we we always, you know, usually usually most couples always book more than two video or more than one videographer. So no matter what, it's always gonna get covered regardless. So uh but you know if there is something wrong, you know, it's for some reason we always have a crew available to come out and and cover what we need to cover. I'll give you an, I'll give you a story. I used to, I had an issue one time. I was shooting and I was at another second shooter. He's that director. His name is Joel. And my keys got locked inside the car. During, and, and ceremony is about to happen in the next 45 minutes. My keys got locked in there. I had the choice whether I was going to break the window, open the door and go into it or, and, and, or call a locksmith and wait or whatever that is, right? But regardless of the matter, I wasn't gonna. I thought I was gonna make the ceremony, so I had Joel uh, cover the photo session. He covered. He had extra extra equipment. He covered the second camera and for the ceremony. But luckily, I had a locksmith. The cop came in, popped the door. I came in and covered, ready to cover. But oh. but I didn't have to do anything. I just all I did was just, he had everything all set up mm. ready, mm-hmm. and. You know, it's just that when so he put his backup camera to use to get that second angle that's for right. you. Gotcha. And so, so you know, and during those times, this you can't bring a and that was at the beach down the shore. We don't our crews in north in the northern New Jersey, New York mm-hmm. area. You know, there's no way we're gonna have somebody come down there to do it. So I think I think there is this this uh, resiliency for our uh, grit for, for uh-huh. grit over the crew that when when it actually matters, they come through. Mm-hmm. That's the bottom line. No matter what, no matter what the situation, we figure it out. There was a time where, when I started, I remember, we just forgot our lenses. We forgot our lenses. And I, we only had one lens, actually. And we had one guy come out, drive all the way down and drop off the lens. It happened. That was in the beginning stages. So this is where, and this is when I was still shooting. That's why I told you I went through a lot of mistakes. So all those mistakes that I had, I had, thought about how do we fix these things it came to it came to a point where I, I stopped supplying lenses because it was my lenses all crews have their own set of lenses now so now the, the lenses are all backed up to each other right so we have massive equipment when we come to it there's no there's no issue mm-hmm. with, so through experience through yeah. experience through <laughs> all those mistakes 
But yeah. you know what? I have to imagine that like other people that's in the industry must go through the exact same thing I went through too. Sure. I would think I'm a smarter guy and not I'm not bad, right? And I made massive stupid mistakes. I have to imagine that all these other new companies, they have to be going through the same thing. And hopefully the mistakes in the beginning are good. And right? That, yeah. I mean, and luckily we haven't made really bad mistakes. Mm-hmm. Now, unforgivable there, mistakes. Unforgivable mistakes. Now, there are times that sometimes because it's technology, there are crashes on cards, digital crashes. Like nothing we could do. We shot it, we did everything we can. And then all of a sudden, when we ingest, it's just a dead card. And we retrieve it. And we spend the money and we do everything we can to retrieve it. And that's why another thing is why it's important that we have backup. We have other cameras involved to capture the footage. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, there is, there's a, a, there was a couple where the ceremony got, the center shot was just a dead shot. But luckily we have a second camera to cover the rest. And the couple was said, understood, no problem. We showed them the receipt that we did to everything we covered nothing could be recovered. And as long as we did everything we can to do it, then to them, that was reassurance to them. But we didn't lose the moment. We still had it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know? That's another through line that, that you know, in just in closing that keeps coming up is the amount of care that's mm-hmm. put in. It's And it's not care in, you know, the way you place something. It's care from your heart. From the way we meet with couples until, you know, we are retrieving mm-hmm. their their footage from mm-hmm. a disc, yeah. whatever it takes right. to make it, um, you know, the communication strong and everything solid. Mm-hmm. The care that goes into the backups of everything, the care that goes into the technology. So I think that's really important. Mm-hmm. In, from start to finish. That's right. I think these cinematographers go into a mode to immediately once, once they get on, on set, on site. You know what I mean? Where it's just the adrenaline's going in a good way and um, just making, sh- like, they Certain. think on their toes. Yes, immediately. Yeah. I, I, I think that's so admirable. It's it's a lot of work. And that's why couples, you know, I always stress that the couples should appreciate the crew. You know, they they, they work through thick and thin. I would rain, say cold, they mostly do. They're, mm-hmm. they're always, Jean and I always Pretty joke. Gracious, yeah. we, mm-hmm. we work with our couples for multiple mm-hmm. months and then... The wedding happens and they never remember us. They mm. only remember the crew. Yeah. So the, <laughs> the crew is the shining star. Yeah. They they love yeah. and rave about the crew. Well, I, I think a lot of, the, the, you know, we, we spoke a lot about trust. And I think a lot of that trust is attributed to all the work that the crew has done. Because, you know, um, being with this company now a number of years myself, um, you know, I, people come in and there's very little questions asked and that that's a ama- that's an amazing testament to the level of trust. It wasn't always that way in the beginning, mm-hmm. but now it is. And, um, you know, there's exceptions, but, but it's okay. You know, that that's okay too. Uh, I think that's really cool. And mm-hmm. I think that's, again, that, that's a testament to, to the crew. And you, you usually it's always, it, it boils down to great communication, but our crew are extremely diverse too. Like, yes. you know, we, yes. we come from all backgrounds, yeah, you, know, you got your Asians, you got your Russians and <laughs> Hispanics, the whole entire culture. Do we have any Italians? Yeah, you're Italian. <laughs> yeah, I'm Italian <laughs> yeah, too. Yeah, we got Italian. We do have Italian. We got yeah. everybody. We got everybody <laughs> a- across the spectrum. And you know what? It's not like we were conscious about who we hire. It's just that whoever was talented, we just hired them. Right. No you know? discrimination. No discrimination. Out, which is helpful in the editing process too because we have – I don't know how many languages are spoken amongst yep. the, the, you oh, know, the entire. It's, like, it's amazing. Up. It's, it's amazing. The so if there is a language out there, and you know, the speeches were in, um, you know, Mandarin, this Mandarin, mm-hmm. or um, Tagalog, Spanish, or whatever yeah. it is, we have people. <laughs> we have editors or shooters that can everybody can pitch in, and yeah, we, we had. A, we had a, I think we had a wedding where they only wanted a women crew only. That's right. Yeah. That's for a lot of the the, the Muslim weddings mm-hmm. where the, mm-hmm. they separate the right. the gender. Yeah. So yeah. and we and, and now and I, I could tell you that our women cinematographers are phenomenal too. Yeah. Extremely talented mm-hmm. as well and just as capable as anybody else. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I'm really proud of the diversity that we have, um, and mm-hmm. I'm proud that and how we how you know we don't judge any of that. We just we just take are you talented. Are you committed? Are you passionate? And yeah, I just want to add to it? this too. Qua has never looked at a resume. Have you no. ever glanced at a resume? I don't. I found that 
interesting in the beginning. I don't. No I, resumes needed. Just uh, be awesome. <laughs> it's just it's just questions and mm-hmm. figuring out you know where you stand you know in your life that type of thing and you know and can you fit in with the with the team at the end of the day. Thank you so much. You are a wealth of knowledge. Everything that I thought I knew about videography, there's always more. Mm-hmm. There's <laughs> always know? more. My head is so <laughs> spinning in a good way. <laughs> there's always more. And Thank you. I, yeah. Truly, really I, yeah. I, I and now I feel like as I sit and I watch video after video, as I often do, because I I genuinely care about the couples, so I like to see how their weddings turn out. So as I watch these videos, I think I even now have an even new perspective yeah. and watching I, it, an eyelash what's, or what's your, what's your takeaway a deeper level of appreciation honestly that's my takeaway mm. i mean I, I hearing um see it's funny i'm not a technical person but the irony of it is i i was asking you a lot of technical questions mm-hmm. because to me personally and i would say for many people i feel that that adds a lot of value to what's happening you know um it's it's a it's an emotional process i think first and foremost for people when they initially come in here um, cause we're giving you back your memories, but to, uh, explain the, you know, how, how we're doing this and kind of getting into that, um, on a deeper level, it hasn't increased my level of, of respect tremendously. So, so yeah, um, hats off to all these amazing you know, cinematographers. I mean, I mean, we don't mention it enough. Everybody in this company, they all, we all come from different backgrounds. I mean, not backgrounds in like, in our, you know, it's not like we're born wanting to be wedding videographers, wedding cinematographers, or wedding producers. We come in with a passion of wanting to tell stories. We want to be artists. We want to be in the entertainment industry. So one of our directors, I mean, he he used to he he used to work on Broadway and doing gaffing, lighting, and work and doing Who? big commercials. Igor. Oh, I didn't realize yeah. he. You did. got Nick Capra. He's a, one of our directors too, and he you know he has one film short you know f- f- uh, movie. Uh, had film festival awards for his movies that he's done for his short films. You know, you got Tan as a you know, award winning uh, cinematographer for some of the commercials that for the food commercials that he's done. You know, every and you got some people that worked on uh, on big movie projects, and some of them are fat into fashion and doing uh, video vlogs and all this type of stuff too. And so, and wedding is just part of their lives as well. That's and so, right. it just know that not everyone's just. Fully in there, and I think that, that I think that's a huge advantage for us because they come from a different perspective. Mm-hmm. If the approach the, is through cin- filmmaking, filmmaking rather than videography, wedding videography, right. there's I, there's something inside of you that either comes alive or slowly dies. And that's a good point too, because life experience I think really does help you enhance your art. There's not, I mean, there's think about all the great songs that were written. And, and all the, you know, the great books and the stories that were told, a lot of that, most of that is because somebody has gone through something, you know, tremendous. And that says a lot about, you know, what our cinematographers bring to the table because of how diverse their background is. And you know what? And they, you know, empathy is a massive thing for them too. They, I don't have locks on my equipment. I don't. I don't lose anything. <laughs> nothing gets stolen not even not even a phone charger yeah you know what i'm saying it's just it, those are the type of people that we work with and you know we we're extremely lucky to have them and those those are the values that really matter to us and they bring it they bring it to work thank you so much Kwa. This thank you awesome. thank you for having me make sure to visit our website podcast.livepicturestudios.com And please make sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Live Picture Studios. You guys can email us at podcast at livepicturestudios.com or hashtag LPS podcast with questions or anything you'd like for us to share. Um, If there are any other cinematographers out there that would like to come on board and share their own experiences with us, please feel free. We're totally open to that. As you know, there's so many processes put into place for everything that we do. This podcast could not have been possible without the production team. It has been hosted and produced by KVI Productions, specifically by Kwa Lee, Natalia Delgado, and Mark Falcon. Our editor is Nicole Palmetti. Music has been provided by Ian Post and Artlist. Until next time, guys. Happy planning. Bye. Bye.